Watch this receipt. So yeah, the bunker. The bunker. Uh, the bunker. Bunker. Da, kanjo. Ah, it's me. English? Mm -hmm. um, there's my name there, James O'Donnell. I would like to see the bunker. The bunker. Uh, cigarette. Mm -hmm. Smoke. You're welcome. In 1945, the city of Berlin was Hitler's capital, and the bunker was his last address. He lived here underground for 105 days. I arrived here on assignment for Newsweek. It was just two months after Hitler's death. As I made my way through the cold, dark chambers, I couldn't help but wonder what had happened here. Finding the answer to that question has taken me many long years. Most of the people who worked in this bunker spent endless years in Russian prison camps. I hoped that those still living could reconstruct their personal experiences here, each from his or her own viewpoint. I can't guarantee that what you're about to see is historical truth. Memory always distorts, of course. But I do believe their stories present a psychological truth and are perhaps as close as we can come. It's January 16th, 1945. The dark chamber you see here was soon to be occupied. The Americans are at the Rhine. And as for the British, well, can't you hear the bombing? There's nothing available. There is nothing available. What? He's going below. What? Hitler is going below to the bunker. Notify your staff. And this will be used for the conference room. This. Mm -hmm. All the rooms are small, Bowman. What have we come to? Oh. What's the trouble, Angel? Well. It's only a 140 kilowatt generator here. It's got to power everything. The lights, the filter, the pump for the spring. Spring? We get our water here from an underground spring. Don't worry, General Ratcliffe. The genius with machinery.
We've carried Frederick the Great all over Europe with us. He's never without it. There will be no smoking in the bunker at any time. Those are the Fuhrer's orders. On duty or off. All meals will be taken in the upper bunker or the old Reich Chancellery Mess Hall. Questions? Dismiss! Major Gunsha, you've spoken to him. About Zossen, about going to Zossen. The Fuhrer refuses to leave Berlin. It's only 18 kilometers away. He has the finest communications of any bunker in Germany, and it's seven times as big. He knows that, General Rattenhuber. He refuses to leave Berlin. I want all calls for the Führer to come through me. Does that include Dr. Goebbels? No. But I will, of course, control all access to the Führer. Understood? Yes, sir. Any message from my wife? No, we haven't been able to get through yet, sir. Welcome to Berlin, Reich Minister Goebbels. Yes, I'm on the side. Well, let's be taken immediately for the communication. I'll take them. Are you still at your country estate? You call. Of course. It's good for the children. We have a swimming pool, tennis court. You know the flowers have just begun to bloom? Wonderful. <laughs> no air raids? So far, we've been fortunate. Please inform the Fuhrer. I'm filled with confidence. We will succeed. The red is the ground. This is ridiculous. I've seen better switchboards in cheap hotels. It's all we have available. Is there a scrambling device? Yes. Where? Here. Hello, Ruckus. Have you been able to reach your wife yet? I'm just trying to get set up here. What about Greta? What's happened to her? Is she still in Berlin? Yes. I've been trying to get her on a plane to Bavaria. The Russians, they tell me they're raping all the women. From what I hear, they're raping everyone. Hey, Hitler. Hey, Hitler. Oh, Speer. Good to see you. Come along. I'll show you. Colonel von Bieler is waiting to see you before you meet with the Führer. A little too. <laughs> when did you get back to Berlin? Last night. From the front? East Prussia. Bad as they say. Worse. The situation conference is going on right now. It started shortly after midnight. So things are getting a little more desperate. Peter Günther, would you make it known that Reich Minister Speer has arrived? Yes, sir. Well, what do you think of the place? It's clammy. That's it. Cold and clammy one moment, and warm and sultry the next. It's not exactly one of your architectural marvels, Speer. I didn't design this one. Good. It also smells. We're 50 feet below the ground here, which is 20 feet below the sewer. Little caution. Borman isn't the only one here who'd like to cut our throats. 
Now tell me, is it true? About the plan to destroy everything? The towns? The villages? The plan exists, yes. Well, will you go through with it? Unless I can talk him out of it. You think that's possible? Excuse me. They've asked you to join the conference. And here at Helmstadt, Panzer Division 6 and 12 have regrouped with 27 new Tiger tanks. We have most encouraging news from General Dietrich. He's repulsed the enemy all along the sector west of the Saar. The Luftwaffe reports the loss of 629 aircraft in the month of December. However, in spite of this, we've brought down 87 enemy bombers. We still have four Panzer divisions fully committed to Budapest. They're confident they can hold the city. The two Panzer armies who fought so gallantly in the Ardennes Budapest. have now regrouped. We can't. They've been resupplied. But of course, we cannot offer them the same <laughs> reinforcements for our air force. When it does, the city disappears from the map. Perhaps the Reich Minister of Every Armaments week, could they supply us in production figures. As we're not at all certain, as of this moment, exactly where we stand. I would call upon him, if you would, my Fuhrer. Speer. The Fuhrer would like to hear the December production figures. The overall production of armaments is down 23%. We are, however, maintaining full production of fighter planes and Panther tanks. Our greatest difficulty right now is getting gasoline to supply them. Two of our largest hydrogenerating plants have been destroyed in air raids, as you well know. The production of synthetic gasoline is at a standstill. And we've all... Thank you, Speer. We've heard enough. And Dr. Morell is with the Führer. It'll be a few moments. Oh, good afternoon, Albert. Or is it evening? You can't tell the difference down here. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You may go in now. Few people I can trust. Speer. Father, sit down. Coffee. Did Bowman send you the instructions? <clears throat> yes. Good. So you'll understand what we want. Complete demolition. I know how. Fire, explosives, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to do what? I mean, I can understand the destruction of. Uh, Bridges and factories and military installations, but surely you don't mean houses and farm animals well, and everything. Trade. Everything. We want nothing left to the enemy. You understand? We want nothing left to the enemy. But under such circumstances, the German people would face utter starvation. We'd all be thrown back to conditions of the Middle Ages. Yeah. But should the war be lost? That is defeatist talk, and I will not allow that. The German people that are left. The German people that are left would not deserve to live. The good ones will have died already, fighting for their fatherland. We must leave them something. Some, no matter how primitive form of society, something. I think you despair far too much, Speer. We've had our setbacks from the beginning, and every setback has always been a, a whiplash, driving us onward with more determination than before. This time we will show the enemy that we will not surrender. We'll never surrender. We'll continue the attack again and again. Ten times over, we'll continue the attack. Policy has been set. Carry that. Well, did you see him? You were quite right, Colonel. At one moment it's warm and sultry, and then suddenly it's cold and clammy. Oh. Too bad. 
Under the circumstances, I think I'll have a word with the engineer. See if we can't change the atmosphere down here. Oh, no, no, no. It's not the ventilation. It's not the system. It's the fewer orders. You see, I'm not allowed to keep the air flowing in the conference room during military staff meetings. Why not? Well, the Fuhrer believes that the air passing through the blowers produces excessive pressure to the ears. He believes it reduces efficiency. Perhaps we can uh, correct the situation. Let's have a look at the main air vent. Filters are usually changed every month. We've been having a problem here, getting a proper fit. As you can see, the air intake is almost completely concealed. How's the filter removed? Oh, just the four screws. Let me see if we can get you a better filter, Henshaw. I think that might help matters. Thanks for your trouble. Oh, whatever I can do. The Americans at dinner. It's a conspiracy, I think. Anything else, sir? Yes, you can call off the air raid. Beg <laughs> <laughs> your pardon? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night. Well, you want to forget dinner? Go to the shelter? Oh, no, thanks. I've had enough of shelters for one day. Let's see if it gets any worse. Can't get any worse than the food. Sorry. Forgive me, Dieter. I, I think I've lost my appetite. I don't blame you. Tell me, how long do you think Hitler will remain in Berlin? I have no idea. But if he stays here long enough underground, there'll be nothing above ground for him to come up for. You mean the air raids? No. I mean, a scorched earth policy. He's committed to it. How ironic. He now appoints you the agent of Germany's destruction after years of being his master builder. I refuse the honor. Refuse? You did say refuse. I'm writing him a memorandum stating clearly, precisely, in detail, that such a policy would prove catastrophic to the future of the German people and I refuse to implement it. And if he insists that you do so? Then, something quite desperate must be considered. And I'd like your help. In that case, I could use a brandy. We could both use a brandy. It's my last bottle. I'll try and get you another. You don't have to bribe me, Albert. You've got my head out of Hitler's noose more than once. I'll do what I can. You may want to change your mind when you hear what I'm thinking. Trust me. Can we talk? I'd say. I want you to make some inquiries to the Army Ordnance Office coming from the Chief of Munitions Division, they will seem like perfectly natural inquiries. Concerning what? Poison gas experiments. They've been testing something new called Tabun. From what I understand, it can penetrate any gas mask, any filter put up against it. Albert, just exactly what do you have in mind? I want to conduct Tabun into the bunker. To you, Albert, and to me, may we both survive. How do you intend to introduce the gas? Through the main air vent near the 
Chancellery Gardens. You can manage that without being seen. There are sentries posted as S guides, but they know me. It won't work, Albert. Tabun's only effective with explosive. I'm quite familiar with it. A shell or a hand grenade would do it, but they would shatter the thin walls of the air ducts. The Tabun's too risky. What would you suggest? The old reliable mustard gas. <laughs> mustard gas? How would you get it? Well, it won't be easy. Just give me time. It's a bunker underground below the chancellery. Uh, no. No, it's impossible. You can't come here. No. Go to Munich. If you go to Munich, I can arrange an escort. Be patient. The battle for Berlin is just beginning. It may take weeks, maybe months, but we shall be victorious. I promise you. I have no doubts. We shall be victorious. Yes, I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. If only my generals showed such devotion, Otto. What do you think, Sergeant? Does our bloody get a wilt this week? No, not yet. When she does, I think we'll have maybe six pups. Look at the size of her. Hey, good dog. Good dog. Yes, smart dog, too. Blondie knows a lot of tricks. You got one trick I'd like to know. How to get good red steak at every meal, eh? <laughs> I told you a month ago. The Eastern Front is like a house of cards. If the front is broken at just one point, all the rest will collapse. Why did the attack fail? I'll tell you why. Incompetence, negligence. If General Bush had only put... He had half a division on the field. No ammunition left. His equipment destroyed. Why didn't he ask for more? Where? How? See, excuses, explanations, that's all you can give me. General Bush is not to blame. I won't allow it. How dare you speak me that way? I'm fighting for Germany my whole life. It's been one long struggle for Germany. How dare you? How dare you? I insist you cannot blame General Bussa. Then who? Who? Who let us down? The troops. The troops did their duty. Look at the casualties. How can you possibly blame the troops? They had no chance. General Galen made it clear with the maps... General of Galen is an incompetent fool. His maps are idiotic and he should be shut up in a lunatic asylum. If you want to send General Galen to an asylum, then you had better have me certified as well. General Boos is now at Gerlitz. I will deal with him myself. Colonel General Gulderin, I'm very concerned about your physical health. I think it requires that you take a six-week sick leave to commence immediately. That be all, gentlemen. No, no. More than that. I tell you, there's a great increase in anti-Semitism coming from the United States. They're beginning to wonder just what it is they're fighting for. Of course, the English are sick to death of this war. If it weren't for Churchill, that Jew-ridden half-American swine, there'd be no English fighting today. Churchill. The grave digger of Europe. What a pity. Not a drop left for the Russians. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to get you another. Doesn't matter. I trust you did send your memorandum to Hitler. 
Yes. And he said, Albert, you're right and I am wrong. There will be no scorched earth. No, he didn't say that. There's been no response. We both knew that nothing would stop him. That's why I'm here. In that case, the small item that you need is available. When do you want it? Friday. What are you doing? Orders. All SS staff guards will take off-duty rest in the communications room. Why? Conversion. SS 6, 7, and 8 are being converted into a casualty station in the chancellery. Oh, we've got casualties coming to the chancellery. How are we supposed to work in here with people lying around all over the place? You will find the entrance through the tunnel. I thought I'd walk through the garden tonight. Get some fresh air. I did that. Minister Speer? Yes. Come with me, please. Wait here. Bowman will be here immediately. Borman? I have no appointment with Borman. Wait here. Hello, sir. Uh, Henschel. How are you? Fine. Engine breakdown? Oh, nothing serious. Still looking for that filter. Thank you. And by the way, you didn't mention our conversation to anyone. What, you mean about the filter? Yes. You didn't say anything to Borman? Oh, no, I did not. Uh, the main air vent. It's been entirely surrounded by a chimney. Oh, yes, I know. I supervised the construction. We did all of it in 12 hours. Oh. On whose orders? Well, the Fuhrer himself. Come with me, sir. I wanted to be the first to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. I remember that wonderful birthday party he had for you at Bersh's garden. Yes. Well, I'm afraid times have changed. Yes. Oh, what is it you wanted to see me about? Führer is greatly disappointed in your spear. Oh? Huh? For some reason, you have not carried out the policy set out for you. I don't know. Uh, which policy do you refer to? The total destruction of all towns and villages. Oh, well. B there have been administrative difficulties. That is the language of his generals, Speer. 
I think you will find the Führer expected a little more of you. Just wait here for a moment. Good evening, Doctor. And good evening to you, Albert. And how are you this evening? I'll be able to tell you better after my meeting with the Führer. He's quite anxious to talk to you. Perhaps I ought to have one of your uh, injections first. It's all right. Go in. Go in. Reading your memorandum. It's a very long memorandum. You say here that we have no right at this stage of the war to carry out our demolitions which would devastate the lives of the people. Is that correct? I wrote the memorandum, yes. Why? You say we have no right. You believe that? If our enemies wish to destroy us completely, why help them? I think you should understand that the policy will be carried out with or without your cooperation, Spear. I am hoping there is still room for reconsideration. No. Nope. I fear. I don't believe that anyone has the right to tie the fate of the German people to his own personal destiny. Why do you continue to press the point? We must be able to make some distinctions between military and purely civilian. I don't want to hear any more. You understand me? I don't want to hear any more. Tell Major Gunther to come in here. Now. Do you remember at Baxter's Garden the hours we spent together planning buildings for the future German Reich? To me, you and I, we were like fellow artists. Speer, you and I. Then we had a complete understanding of each other. Fill in the table. I'll be off. Today it's your birthday, correct? Yes. And you asked for my photograph. Yes, my sir. I will treasure it forever. Well, I've signed it to you personally. <coughs> my hand shakes, you know. My, <laughs> my hand shakes. I've signed it to you. I hope you can read it. May I read it now? I'm 
grateful for this pledge of our enduring friendship. Speer, you will now inform every official of every town. I want every Gauleiter to know that there must be total destruction. I've given you complete authority over every one of them. They must all comply without question. In those areas where the enemy is now approaching, there will be total destruction. Is that understood? I keep thinking. If the war is lost, the people of Germany will be lost also! How dare you sit on my presence? Stay up! The people of Germany will be lost also. So there will not need to think about survival. We shall destroy everything. You will instruct them, Speer. You will instruct all the officials of all the towns, every Gauleiter. Total destruction. You will order them. Is that understood? You will order them. Total destruction. You will answer me, please. Is that understood? Did you send in the sugar? Yes, yes. With the tea. Here, you. Take this in. If they want tea cakes this afternoon, tell them we have those too. Don't burn it. Do you want some coffee? No, no, thank you, Franz. Have you seen him? Who? A Führer. I spoke with him yesterday. His eyes, Franz. So clear and strong, like always. The man is a god, Franz. And I will tell you right now, he will not die. No matter what happens, Adolf Hitler will never die. <clears throat> That's good. How did you get it? <laughs> I've traveled over 900 miles these past three days. I've been to both fronts. I have my sources. I'm sure you won't join me? No, thank you. I'm a prisoner here in this office, these four walls. I haven't sleep here sometime. I envy you, Albert. You shouldn't. Well, what happens now? Nothing. And what does nothing mean, exactly? No more assassination attempts. I think... I was capable of only one. I see. You rise with Hitler, and you will fall with Hitler. All of us. All of us. I don't think the fate of Germany can be severed from that of Adolf Hitler. Did he intend to carry out his orders of destruction? No. I will warn the Gauleiters that if they attempt to burn down their towns and villages. The people will rise up and burn them. If Borman has his way, he'll have you hanging from the first meat hook. I can handle Borman. And I can count a hell of a lot of corpses who said that once. I'm sorry, sir. The Fuhrer is in conference at the moment. Oh, but Colonel von Bülow has asked to see you while you're waiting. Thanks, Major Gensch. Oh, he's in the Chancellery dining room. Colonel. So, what are you going to do? About what? Well, I thought you'd have heard. Bormann has been placed in charge of the Gauleiters. He told Hitler that you deliberately disobeyed his orders. Bormann's quite correct. But if he controls the town officials... He doesn't control anything outside of that bunker. 
I'm the one who goes to see them, who listens to their complaints. I'm the one they trust, and they'll go on trusting me. May I? Well, I hate to mention this, but what if you're no longer alive? That is a point. Do you really think Hitler won't touch you? I'm going to find that out very soon. Oh, God, it's all sober now. I come from an ancient, honorable family. I can't understand how I ever got here. Hitler. Bormann. Goebbels. And the master of the Imperial Needle, Dr. Morell. I'm told his injections contain pulverized bull's testicles. Every day, at four o'clock, he sits with his secretaries at tea and crumpets. That's true. I'm quite serious. Excuse me, sir. You're requested to join the Situation Conference. Thank you. I'll be right there. The Hitler court. You know, I keep thinking about the Roman court. In the writings of Juvenal, he said, yesterday they were ruffians. Today they control our lives. Tomorrow, they will wind up as keepers of the public lavatories. As they cross the Rhine at three junctures, including Oppenheim. General Patton, 3rd Division. Oppenheim? <coughs> what are units? <coughs> what are units meeting them? Uh, well, we have nothing in the vicinity at the moment, but there are five tank destroyers from the camp at Say, and they're on the move now. Beer. Yes. You've heard the American advance into the Ruhr. If the Ruhr is taken, how would it affect our overall production? Whatever remained of our armament production would scarcely maintain our forces in the field for... The Third Reich is about to collapse. Losing the Ruhr would only hasten the inevitable. I want all inhabitants of the row to be evacuated starting tomorrow. My fear. Tomorrow, that's all. Uh, one moment, issue the order. It's a staggering operation. Are you quite Millions sure? of people yes, under sir. battlefield I've conditions. Checked it out twice. There will be countless civilian casualties. supposed to go in there? If you would. What do you think, Speer? The little bitch has done very well. She has. Bowman is now in charge of the Garlighters. Did you know that? So I've been told. Do you know the reason why? Yes. You have no faith, Speer. You have no faith in the German people. But we have survived. We have survived the Romans. We've survived the great battles of the Middle Ages. We've survived the wars of religion, the Thirty Years' War, the Napoleonic War. We've even survived the Great War itself. And you, you tell me that Germany will no longer exist. Is that what you think? There has never been a war such as this one. <laughs> that is exactly why I pursue my goal with such, yes, fanaticism. All right, battles are won, battles are lost. It is essential then never to lose one's nerve. But we must be able to accept defeat. 
God, defeat. The defeat after defeat. Knowing we shall emerge victorious in the end. All right. Now, you disobeyed my orders. Are you aware of what must come from that? Is there any reason I should not take the measures called for in such a case? I ask you not to grant me any special consideration. <sighs> yeah. I think it is clear that my architect is overworked. I'll see to it that you go on leave at once. I'm in perfect health. If you no longer want me to continue as your minister, then dismiss me right now. Speer, you must convince yourself that the war is not lost. Give me your assurance, and you may continue as you have been. My Shira, the war is lost. The war is not lost! The war is not lost. The war will never be lost. We will defeat them. We will defeat them all. I will destroy Bolshevism. I will wipe out the scourge and pestilence of Jewish Marxism. I will defeat them all. I will defy the entire world. You hear me? My spear. Spear, you will have faith in me. If you say you have faith in me, you may continue as... I wish I could believe in victory, as you do, but I don't. And I refuse to join those swine in your entourage who tell you they believe in victory, when really they don't. And I will ask you this. Do you still hope for a successful conclusion? If you could at least hope that the war is not lost. Surely you must be... You must be able to hope. Speer, that would be enough to satisfy me. You have 24 hours to think over your answer. Money is no problem. Money, it's an architect's dream. It's just arrived. Magnificent spear. Truly worthy of, uh, of the Third Reich. Splendid. <laughs> I'm afraid, though, my fear, the little village of Linz will no longer be a village. That's splendid. Good. I want uh, construction to start as soon as possible. Wonderful. Perhaps we should look over the cost estimates. Why? Why, I know it's going to cost a great deal of money, and that's very good. Nothing impresses the Americans more than money, Spear. Always remember that. It's wonderful. Well done, Spear. Well done. My good architect. My genius architect, rather. <laughs>
Work is ours, thank you, Bob. I told him the war is lost. I think he's to arrest you. He gave me 24 hours to change my mind. Uh, will you? Blondie had puppies. <laughs> How wonderful. Send a message to the troops, fight to the finish. Blondie had puppies. Do you know, I think the man is actually fond of me. But he'll still have you killed. No. Why not? Because I'm going to tell him that I support him with all my heart. Including his policy of destruction? Yes. But there will be complications. Intolerable delays, bureaucracy at its worst. I doubt that we'll even get it working before Germany is totally defeated. You know what you're trying to do? Deceive the greatest master of deceit of this century. He'll believe me. Why? Because he wants to. I never doubted it. I knew I could rely on you. I knew it. I knew it. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you. The Fuhrer takes great pride in the youth of Germany. You will serve your country and you will serve your Fuhrer. Heil Hitler! Heil How long till they reach the front? Tomorrow morning. It's not that far. What's going on? What happened? Oh. Roosevelt died this morning. I tell you, it's a gift from God. Fate has now removed the greatest war criminal in history. The Jew lover finally dies. This is the turning point. This is the turn of fortune we've been waiting for. There. Frederick the Great in his worst days, almost finished, almost defeated. And then, a turn of fortune. He emerged victorious. Remember the day you became our leader? The horoscope given to you by Himmler? The prediction of war, a series of setbacks, and then overwhelming victory. This evening, I broadcast a prediction to the people. Let them know. Let the world know. That miracle will now come to be. What is it, Borman? The dispatch from General Ziedler. Vienna has fallen.
Mish. What is it? She's here. Who? Ava Brown. Oh, uh, just leave it there, please. I have such a weakness for beautiful clothes. Ah, that is because you look so beautiful in them. <laughs> You're too kind, but it isn't true. No matter what I wear, I always look the peasant, always. But then I don't complain, you see. I think he likes me the better for it. Yes, I will, General. I yes, will sir. tell him. Yes, I will convey. And the Fuero wishes me to express yes, his deep you. appreciation for your birthday greeting. No, no, the rum. I told you the rum goes in first. What did you do with those birthday candles, Franz? Well, they were. Never mind, I have them. Fiora's birthday in this place. How did we ever come to this? Say something. Welcome to Berlin, Reichsfuhrer Himmler. Reichsmarshal Goering arrived only a few moments ago. Eating before the Fuhrer arrives, shame on you. Careful. In both directions. We're surrounded by assassins. Himmler and his bunker informant. Goering and his loyal gut. Speaking for myself, I intend to outlive the third rank. Then why do you keep coming back? I'm sentimental about birthdays. What does Dr. Morel say? Nothing. He tells us nothing. But you can see for yourself. Ever since the assassination attempt at Rastenburg, the bomb came so close. Hitler has never been the same. From what I've heard, Fegelein, from all sources, I don't think we can depend on him much longer. Did he make it all right? You have my promise? He'll be there. The Luftwaffe can't fly without petrol, Spear. <laughs> I think that's quite obvious. What's equally obvious is that the Ruhr is now cut off from the rest of Germany. There are no fuel supplies reaching any of the major cities, including Berlin. What we have in storage, I've allocated to the hospitals. The hospitals? Yes. Those are Hitler's orders? No. 
You've taken it upon yourself. I've been taking quite a lot upon myself these days, haven't we all? The time has come, now, to negotiate a peace. You mean without Hitler? I've been in contact with Count Bernadotte of Sweden. Bernadotte? Does he have the authority? He has the contacts, Fagelheim. But he's a very simple man. He has no understanding of the Jewish problem, for instance. He wants his countrymen returned from the concentration camps. Can't that be arranged? I've agreed to release a thousand Jewish women, if they can be designated Polish instead of Jewish. I must be cautious. The Soviets are storming Rudishtov on the outskirts of Berlin. I know how difficult it was for you to come here today. Believe me, your devotion touches my heart. There have been questions, I know, about my health. Well, you see me now. It is true there is a certain... I have a certain trembling in my arm and my legs. But I can assure you, good friends, the trembling has not reached my head or my heart, no. My heart will never tremble. Never. And in the weeks to come, we will drive the enemy from our country. And we have the greatest weapon of all, the Teutonic fury of the German people. We will not be defeated. We will fight them to the last soldier, to the last tank to the last aircraft they possess. We shall not be defeated. We shall not be defeated. We shall not be defeated. Thank you. Long live Germany. Tell me, what is it? The Russians have just entered the boroughs of Kopernik and Spandau. I regret to say that Berlin is now closed on three sides. General Steiner. Order General Steiner's Panzer Corps to counterattack at once. He has fewer than 11,000 men. I want all Air Force personnel placed at the disposal of General Steiner. If any commander holds back his forces, he will forfeit his life in five hours. And tell General Koller that he will guarantee with his head that the last man will be thrown in. How can Steiner counterattack? He's having enough trouble retreating. You know. I know there'll be no counterattack. With or without orders, it will never be attempted. But how come I'm possibly? Who's responsible for the breakthrough? It was the 
56 panzers. They couldn't hold them back. General Wilding. Issue an order for his immediate arrest and execution. Sure. All officers who do not press the attack will carry a sign stating I am a deserter and I declined to defend German women and children. You will then hang them from the nearest tree. What's your name? Kruger. Hmm? Kruger? Uh, Willy Kruger, my Führer. Kruger? Yes. I wish my generals had your courage. Thank you, my Führer. Goodbye, yeah. Joseph? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Magda. What is it now, Joseph? I came in from the garden. What do you want? I told you I'd let you know when I felt the time had come. Magda, did you hear me? Yes. You haven't changed your mind. I'll pack up and leave in the morning. I meant about the children. No. Have you decided what to tell them? That they're going to visit the Fuhrer. They adore him, you know that. Well, until tomorrow then. Till tomorrow. From the north at Eberswalde, from the south at Fürstehassen. The Russians are advancing at every defensive stronghold. In. My Führer, I think it would be most prudent now if we uh, transferred, if we moved, all of us, to Bersis Garden. No. We have aircraft standing by. No, we'll stay here in Berlin. Yes, my friend. Perhaps. Yes? <coughs> Perhaps some other members of the staff can be transferred. No, no, it's impossible. I can't leave right now. But listen carefully. I found a, a wonderful place for you and the children. I'm sending off written instructions. You'll be pausing as a director of bombed-out children seeking refuge. I've taken six children from a party kindergarten to make the group look entirely plausible. And no, I, I, I don't know when I'll see you. He's determined to stay here and take over the defense of the city. I, I will. Hmm? I well, have courage. Take care of the children. I just came to say goodbye. You? You're leaving too? Don't ask me why. Perhaps the Fuhrer just doesn't care anymore. Dr. Haas is taking my place. I'm grateful to be leaving. What a pity that you can't come with me. <laughs> Fiora, two of the secretaries wish to speak with you. They're waiting. We have a request, my Führer. 
We ask to be allowed to remain here with you. Thank you, my Fiora. Goodbye, Rebel. You be careful. Goodbye, Sergeant. I'm on my way. Yes, good luck. How long will you stay? As long as I'm assigned here. To tell you the truth, I'm glad to be getting out. Yes, but then you haven't the same loyalty as myself because you don't know the Fuhrer as I do. Having been a member of his personal staff, his chief valet, and being a highly decorated soldier, I, I consider my position here to be a great honor. Well, whatever happens, I wish you well, Rockers. Yes, Godspeed. You getting a new assistant? No, 24-hour duty. Mm -hmm. Me too. Where's General Steiner? Where is General Steiner? Bring me General Steiner! Here at once! We've tried to contact him, but we think he's been captured. Where is the Air Force? The airfields are completely covered now by enemy fighters. We can't afford to risk... You anymore. hear that? You hear that? The Air Force are superfluous! So what do we need them for? String them up at once! Uh, mommy, String them up! Liars, traitors, corruption, all of you! Listen to me. We think it is vital that you leave the bunker immediately. Why? If you are to remain in command of the Reich, then you must go to Burgess Garden as soon as possible. I will not go to Burgess Garden! I will not go to Burgess Garden! You and all of your incompetence can go to hell! I will stay in Berlin! Do you hear me? I will stay in Berlin! The army has betrayed me. I will fight in Berlin. My orders were not carried out. I will fight to my last breath. I will die in Berlin. The Third Reich has totally failed. I'll die in Berlin. I've been betrayed. The war is lost. The war is lost. Excuse me. Are you Henschel? Yes. I am Dr. Haas. Uh, we met at the Bastis Garden, I believe. I need your help. My help? We've taken a number of the wounded into the chancery and set up an emergency casualty station. There isn't enough water to go around. I understand that the water supply comes from an underground spring here in the bunker. That's right. To possibly divert some of it. Well, I could set up some makeshift hoses. Thank you. Has this been cleared with Borman? It's been cleared with God. Oh. Help me, please. 
easy now. It's going to be all right now. You're getting your water. Did you talk to Hitler? No. Well, his condition is getting worse. There. Get him off him oh, no. immediately. Oh, no. The rumors you hear are quite correct. Uh, the Fuhrer has long to live. At this point, I think the question is academic. I'll die for you. I'll die for you. Hey, you, my sweetheart. Uh, don't you want to go away too? No. Hey, hey, don't you want to? Uh, no, of course not. Of course not. What is it they say now? Uh, I'd rather have a Russian soldier on my belly than a British bomb on my head, eh? <laughs> what is it? Colonel Fagerland. He's drunk. I can see that he's drunk. Why have they brought him in? He's been absent for three days. I put the call through myself to his Berlin apartment. They just picked him up. What will they do to him? Not much. Well, for desertion? He's, uh, he's married to Ava Braun's sister. How long were you there in the apartment? Where is the woman? Answer me. Hmm. Pearls. Jewels. Tell me, General, you were not by any chance on your way out of Berlin when we found you? Hmm? I have nothing to say. Was he alone? No. He had a woman with him. She got away. Had a woman with him? <coughs> she may have been a spy. Together, they may have been responsible for the leaks to the enemy lately. Had a woman with him? Figlein? He oh. was obviously about to leave Berlin. No. No. I think it's a case of desertion. Interrogate him further. For what purpose? What? You hear me? Yes, my Fuhrer. And then? Release him. Release him? He's Himmler's liaison man. I think we must defer to that. There's no proof. Anyway, he's... His wife is having a baby. Figelin's wife is having a baby. Have a baby? Eva told me yesterday. That his wife would be very upset if something should happen to him. There is an urgent communication. I have been asked by General Munker to give it to you immediately. Heard it on shortwave. Heard what? Himmler has been negotiating for a peace settlement. He's offered to surrender the Western armies to Eisenhower. My God, the swine! The stinking swine! My Fuhrer, I beg you. We can't allow a traitor to succeed you. We've got to leave for Versus Garden at once. We have aircraft standing by. You only to give the word. What shall we do with General Fagelein? The passports, the jewels, 
She was on his way to join Himmler. Shall we keep him under arrest? No. But he will take off immediately. He'll leave Berlin as soon as possible. General Fegelein is not going anywhere. said my friends it is not I who killed the lamb it is him he said he looked like me Major Gunch. Bowman would like to see you immediately. Well, where is everybody? What happened to all the guards? Most of them are around fighting for the city. Ah, oh, Albert. Albert. How good it is of you to come here. I was delighted to hear you were coming to see the Fuhrer. I've only come to say goodbye. Exactly question of leaving, of getting out of Berlin and going to Berchtesgaden. The Fuhrer values your opinion, Albert. You must try to convince him to go. We have such little time left. You must speak to him. He will listen to you, I'm sure. I'm sure he will. Would you do that? If there's one man left in the height, I know that I can count on. It is you, Albert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
for anything. Linz. We could have made it the capital of a National Socialist Party. Linz. Could have been a German Budapest. <laughs> Linz, the place of my youth, many years ago. Do you remember the great bell tower of the meeting hall? And the crypt, the marble crypt for my burial place? And you told me it would cost a great deal of money to build a, a new metropolis on the banks of the Danube. What do I care for money? I've never acquired anything of value in my life. I have nothing. I have nothing. A new Germania, a new capital for the German people. Ah. It's all a dream. I have nothing. What might have been Speer. They're trying to persuade me to fly to Bastis Garden. Jodl and the others. Have you heard? Yes. I'd like your opinion, please. It's my opinion that the leader of the German people should remain here in Berlin. He should end his life in the German capital, not in some vacation chalet. Yes, my friend, Goebbels agrees with you. I cannot, of course, join in the fighting myself. I might fall into the hands of the Russians, you understand. I'd be then be brought to Moscow and then caged in a zoo. But they're not going to cage me in a zoo. They're not going to mutilate my corpse. No. I've issued orders that my body be cremated upon my death. Believe me, Speer, it is easy for me to put an end to my life. One brief moment. I, I'm free of everything. I'm free of everything. My Fuhrer, there's something I feel I must tell you before we part today. These past four weeks, I've deceived you. I've not carried out your policy of destruction. Eva. What, Eva? Eva Brown. She's decided to end her life here, by my side. My sure. did you hear what I had to say to you? Don't leave here, Spear, will you? Without saying goodbye to me. saying goodbye. I even gave orders to the SS guards. I told them you are not to allow Albert Speer to leave until he has seen me. You look lovely. Just the same as always. Well, I see no point in going around looking like a death mask. Come in. I hope you like it. You should, since you designed all the furniture yourself. I know the room is a little small, but I just had to have them with me. Champagne? Thank you. Sit, please. 
Watch and done. Only the best. I must warn you, everything tastes rather damp and musty. Can't be helped. Hi, Lila. A farewell drink. I'm so glad you came. You know, Borman thought you might be working against the Fuhrer. But your coming here now proves that you are, doesn't it? Adolf wanted me to go to Munich, but I refused. Yes, he told me that you were. Well, I'm really quite happy here. I mean, it isn't so terrible. If only I didn't have to look into Borman's face every other moment. <laughs> I've never liked that man. It's all so terrible, Albert. Why do so many people have to be killed? It's all for nothing. Ativa, I have lost Gigi. Who? My doll. Did I leave her here? No, I don't think so. Why don't you go ask Toodle, huh? The Goebbels' children are here? Yes, they're staying. You might be coming. It's quite an unusual place, isn't it? Well, the children are adapting very well, I think. How's your family, Albert? They're all back to Scotland. Look, Magda. There's still enough time. Uh, I could arrange for barges. Barges? On the Hoffel River. They can take you to the Elba. The Americans. Oh, don't you know, Albert, we have no intention of leaving here. But you have to realize when the Russians arrive. My husband and I have decided to die with the Fuhrer. I was thinking of the children. So am I. Our lives have no further meaning without Hitler. But, Magda, the, ch the children are so young and... And far, far too good for the kind of life that would come after us. Oh, damn it, Magda! How do you know what kind of life is coming after you? Don't be apprehensive, Albert. Look. Yesterday, the Fuhrer took off his golden party badge and he gave it to me. Can you imagine, Albert? Oh, we're so proud to be ending our lives with him. I look upon it as a precious gift of fate. Mother. Excuse me. What is it, dear? Hmm? <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, sweet. Yes. And that's all. Yes, of course, I will at once. This is the telegram from Reich Marshal Hermann Goering to Foreign Minister von Ribbentrop. I've transcribed it. I don't know if you can read my writing. We have the full text of the telegram now. If by 10 p.m., April 23rd, 
It is apparent that the Führer has lost his freedom of action to conduct the affairs of the Reich. Then I, Reich Marshal Hermann Göring, inherit all of his offices. He sits there in the mountaintop in Bersch's garden and tells the whole world he's taking command of the Third Reich. We must take action immediately. Brutal. He's a brutal man. Hard as iron. Ruthless, cold. <laughs> in a crisis, he is ice cold. He is ice cold. Ha! Ah. Huh? He's committed an act of treason. Oh. We stood together. Years ago. Goering. Oh. Determined. Deadly. Oh. The man? Well, he is a drug addict, Foreman. Corrupt. But he's a drug addict. It is a well-known fact. What do you intend to do? Yeah. Hmm? Uh, how do you intend to deal with Goering? Yeah. You must resign his office at once. The situation demands more than a resignation. A telegram to Ribbentrop. There's no honor left. Oh. We can still reach the SS at Ober Salzburg. Place him under arrest. I'm leaving now, my Führer. I wanted to say goodbye. And, uh... is a Junker 390. It's capable of flying from Germany to Japan non-stop. It's no use, Barr. He won't leave. I could fly him to Argentina. I know of a place to refuel. It's no use. Borman, where is he? The Fuhrer is with his secretaries. Yes, and Eva. They're having afternoon tea and crumpets. Would you like to join them? How would you like some afternoon tea and crumpets? And do you remember, we would sit around the fireplace and listen to the music of Wagner. And you could see the snow falling outside and you knew there was no place on earth as beautiful. Oh. I always felt like a Wagnerian god there, so high above the clouds. Oh, and do you remember the cook, uh, Will Cannon? Oh, yeah, he was as big as a house. He had, he had enough for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but the sausages that man mm. could make and the little cream cakes. <laughs> You love those cream cakes with the chocolate sauce, remember? The little cakes at Birch's Garden. The cook that was trained in Vienna. It's total incompetence. Vienna should have been held. They lost their courage. They lost their faith in the will of the Almighty. Please. Let's not talk about Vienna. Let's think only of Berch's garden. How lovely it is in the spring. The flowers, the valleys turning green. Mutti. Please, can we tell them? Let's tell them now. This evening, as soon as the arrangements can be made, we are going to be married.
What is your name? Wagner. Walter Wagner. Party member. You have notary and registrar pass to perform a marriage ceremony? I have. Stay here. Dismiss. He'll do. I have to wait. Uh, the Führer is talking to Dr. Goebbels. It's almost midnight. What difference does it make? And listen to this. Brave King Frederick, wait but a little while and the days of your suffering will be over. Behind the clouds, the sun of your good fortune is already rising. Soon it will show itself to you. And it did. He was on the point of perishing, and he was saved. The applications have been accepted. The bands examined and found to be in order. Do you attest that you were of pure Aryan descent? and free of hereditary diseases. Yes. I ask you, my leader, Adolf Hitler, do you attest that you are of pure Aryan descent and free of hereditary diseases? Yeah. Since both of these engaged persons have stated their willingness to enter into matrimony, I herewith declare the marriage valid before the law. If you will sign the document, please. <laughs> To the lovely bride, congratulations. Uh, and to our great Fuhrer. They've taken over the Potsdamer Platz. Tanks, artillery, infantry, Russian soldiers everywhere. Soldiers, ignorant peasants, raping every woman they can find, stealing the flush toilets because they think they're potato washing machines. Good evening, gentlemen. Should I say good morning? What's that music? A party. What? <laughs> oh, God. Ah, uh, welcome to the wedding party. Wedding? Führer has just married Ever Brown. You serious? Huh? <laughs> Don't they know? Don't they realize the Russians could be here in this bunker within 48 hours? Go and speak to the Führer. Tell him it's our last chance to leave. Where is he? I don't see him. <laughs> so I have decided, at the end of my life, to marry the young woman who, after many years of two friendship, came of her own free will to this city. <clears throat> when it was almost completely under siege, in order to share my fate. We have chosen death to escape the disgrace of removal or surrender. I'm talking about Russian assault troops only 300 meters from here, but I still think we can get out if we move You're wasting now. your breath, General. The Fuhrer will not leave Berlin, nor will I, my wife, or my children. We never wanted war. was provoked solely by the agents of Jewish Marxist interests. Posterity simply cannot place the blame for this war on me. Out of the ruins of our cities, there will arise a new hatred for those people who are ultimately responsible.
Before my death, I now expel Reich Marshal Hermann Goering and Reich Führer SS Heinrich Himmler from the party. They have brought shame on our country and our people. Disloyalty has undermined our resistance and it has not been granted for me to lead my people to victory. We'll have three groups in the breakout. We'll divide up the bunker personnel and those left in the chancellery. What are our chances? If we make it to the Strakow factory, if we get that far, stick together. We should make it to the British lines. Excuse me, General Monka. The Fuhrer would like to see you immediately. Hi, Fuhrer. You've assumed command of the Berlin fighting? Yes, my Fuhrer. My life is in your hands. I wish to live until the 5th of May. There is some significance to that day. 5th of May is the anniversary of Napoleon's death. We're both men born before our time. So much the worse for Europe. History will be my judge, as it was for him. I cannot guarantee the date, my Fuhrer. Is that all, my Fuhrer? To Admiral Dönitz, the Führer is now conducting the defense of Berlin. He orders you to proceed against all traitors who are not fighting. Send it out at once. Sir. Amish, I expect you to remain on duty here until the breakout. Yes, sir. Here. I want you to have this one. Oh, no. I couldn't take it. I couldn't. Please, don't be silly. I have no use for it now. And you will have it for this winter and your life after the war. And when you put it on, dear Trudy, you will think of me and the times we shared in Bavaria, huh? We're closing the doors here, Dr. Cheng. Why? We need all the air we can get. Dr. Goebbels is having a farewell party for his friends. Friends? Who is there left to come? Dr. Goebbels would like uh, six of the wounded soldiers to attend the party. They're boys, mere boys, and many of them are dying. You really think they want to say farewell to Dr. Goebbels? <laughs> express my deep appreciation for your loyalty and your devotion. Although our enemies remain greatly impressed with the courageous fighting spirit of our troops, it must be stated that the morale of our men is slowly sinking. The enemy is now indulging in a great orgy of hate and a thirst for destruction. For that reason, we must fight until the final breath in our bodies. I wish I could tell you the struggle might still succeed. 
Unfortunately, that's not the case. The enemy has stated under no conditions will Germany be given lenient treatment. Of course, that's the work of the Jews. I hope anyone in a position to do so will kill off these Jews like the vermin they are. In Germany, that job already is fairly complete. I trust the world will take its cue from us. I look at these brave young fighting men, and my heart goes out to them. Let us show them our gratitude, shall we? We got the news from a Stockholm radio broadcast. Go on. The report is that Mussolini and his mistress were captured by partisans yesterday and executed. <coughs> yes. Their bodies were taken to a public square and hung there upside down. Capsules. Where did you get them? They were given to me by Himmler's physician. Himmler? Has it been tested? The box is sealed. <coughs> How can we do that? What, my fear? How can we test them? What do we do with the puppies? Kill them. Hmm. 
My dear. Are you afraid? No. I'm not even thinking about my own death. It's the children. That's where I must have a great deal of courage. Dear God. My dear and gracious God will forgive me, I know, if I myself give them their release. I wouldn't trust anyone else. to say goodbye. Bauer, take it. I want you to have it. Oh, thank you, my Fuhrer, but uh, I couldn't accept such a gift. You deserve it. It has great historical value. Well, I would accept it only to give to a museum one day. Goodbye, Bauer. Ready? Yes, my Fiora. Good. Now you keep that door closed. Then you wait ten minutes before you open it. I will. Good. Goodbye, Gunja. Goodbye, my Fiora. Thank you.
but not hard. We're going to fly to Birch's Garden tomorrow with the Fuhrer. Now, I want you to go to bed very early tonight. And as soon as you're ready for bed, I'm going to give each of you a sweet chocolate. It will help to keep you from having air sickness. Could I have two? <laughs> no, my love. Only one apiece. One big piece. Putting you through now. Fair enough. Stop it now. No more. Yes. Come on. 
Dr. Goebbels wishes to know if the bodies have been inspected. You may tell him he can rest assured that they are beyond all human recognition. Otherwise, you'll be sick in the morning. Good night. Good night, love. We stopped those rotten communists dead in their tracks here on their home ground. Those days will never be forgotten. We sang the horse whistle together right on the streets. And I tell you, it was the power of the Fuhrer that brought the people over to the Nationalist Party. Masses don't want to be burdened with problems. They desire only one thing, to be led by a great leader. That's what the intellectuals never understood. But I can assure you, Hitler knew it. everything to the money changers and screaming brokers on the rotting planks of capitalism. We gave the world a solution to the Jewish problem and how do they thank us? We gave them reasons and options to take pride in their existence. We gave them perception and meaning to live as nations based on firm foundations of clear and shining examples and how do they thank us on conditional betrayal? That will be the true verdict of world history. Well, that's their problem now. Excuse me, gentlemen.
At least you good people won't have to carry our bodies up this long flight of stairs. Now we can't possibly go this way because the Soviets have blocked off the river route. So we make our way as quickly as possible across the Wilhelmstrasse to the shelter of the Kaiserdorf subway station. Our main goal is to surface outside of the Soviet ring. What are you doing? Smallpox. What? I'm giving myself smallpox. Do you want to be raped? Use it. I want to leave with your group. As you wish, Bonnie. Hannes, goodbye. Goodbye, Frau Unit. Goodbye, Hannes. Major Gershia. Thought you'd gone. Thought you had two. So, what happens now? I'm hungry. Let's eat. You coming? Now, if they want to shoot me, they won't find me. I can throw off the lights, seal the doors, start the sprinkler system. Where are you going? I'm leaving. Where? Where? I don't know where. Maybe I just don't want to die here. Rokas, for the first time you look like a real soldier. Just in case. Would you give this letter to my wife? I was about to ask you the same thing to me. What's the time? Almost 4 a.m. Say. Good luck, Ruckus. And you, Hans.
Stand by, please. Stand by for an important announcement. It is reported today that our Führer, Adolf Hitler, died fighting in Berlin, fighting to his last breath against the enemies of the Reich. You have just witnessed the last days of Adolf Hitler and met the people who worked and lived with him in the Berlin bunker. Of all those in the last desperate breakout, only six were able to elude Russian capture. Mrs. Christian and Mrs. Younger were among the six. They were captured by the British. For years, it was thought that Martin Bormann had escaped to South America. But his body was discovered in Berlin in 1972 and positively identified. A suicide at the time of the breakout. Albert Speer was sentenced at the Nuremberg trials to 20 years imprisonment. He lives in Heidelberg today, where he has written his memoirs. Munke, Gunther, Rattenhuber, and Bauer were captured by the Russians and sent to Soviet prison camps. Colonel von Bilo, the last officer to leave the bunker, was captured by the British. Sergeant Rokas Misch spent many years in a Russian camp. Today, he is still a Berliner and lives only two miles from the old bunker. Hannes Henschel, the machinist, also captured by the Russians, is still alive and living near Heidelberg. It was Thomas Hardy who said, while much is too strange to be believed, nothing is too strange to have happened. For nothing will stop the mighty will of the German people, nothing. For we stand united, one nation unified under the banner of national socialism, as one people, as one party, one leader, one jubilee. Long live national socialism. Long live the greater glory of the German fatherland. Amen. Amen.